Games Workshop have been through some tricky times recently. Whilst granted, not exactly in terms of sales of miniatures, but in terms of their communication and the way that they deal with their community. A lot of people have started to change the way that they look at the company, and most of it isn't all that positive. But how well is it founded? Well, today, after a couple videos talking about Warhammer Plus, I thought I would bring an update, as Games Workshop have recently released their newest half yearly report. And there's some quite interesting things of the future about what they expect to do in terms of copyright and the community that they have built. So strap in, because it looks like Games Workshop has started to do something quite good. You know what? I enjoy playing games on my Wii phone, but I'm just a bit fed up of paying for them. Then don't you swine. Who's that? Are you talking to me? Yeah, you. Did you know Friends and Dragons is a free-to-play strategy-based mobile RPG available on App Store and Google Play? The game has a massive collection of heroes with strategy and puzzler gameplay in a rich fantasy world. But what sets this game apart is its unique co-op. Wow, that is unique. You can even upgrade and collect over 150 heroes joining together with friends and create guilds to take over and gain unlimited power. You can also um, complete really tough challenges if you want. Tougher than getting back custody for my kids? Yes, way harder than that. But this time, this time you will have friends to help you along in the incredible co-op game modes. Wow, that sounds amazing. Where can I find it? Check it out today by clicking the link in the description or um, scanning the QR code on the screen right now. That's amazing. One of my favorite heroes so far is the Mage Jewels. Being able to get in the right position and slicing through multiple enemies at once is incredibly satisfying. I hope I get those special bonuses of one free summon, daily energy potions and gold for free. What an exclusive offer. And you can click the link to get it. Yes, hurry up now. Of course, all big companies do this sort of thing, especially the size of Games Workshop being one of the biggest companies in the UK and one of the biggest companies that make miniatures. Of course, Games Workshop are so well known for their Warhammer miniatures at this point, it's no surprise that they're doing pretty well, and especially over the last six months. The half yearly report goes through all their revenue and of course, the profits that Games Workshop have come through and it seems it has gone up. Many speculate due to COVID, but of course, Warhammer is still getting bigger and bigger. This is mostly done for investors though. A lot of what they show here is kind of irrelevant to most people, talking about their business plans, their strategies, and the growth that they're hoping to get into the future. However, it starts to get a little bit interesting when they talk about their community, because in the last few months there's been a lot of speculation about what Games Workshop are doing, with taking down things like Astartes off YouTube and putting it onto their paid subscription service Warhammer Plus, Astartes being one of the most famous and the most beloved Warhammer CG creations, made by one guy, a fan, but it was free, and it's not anymore, which angered a lot of people. I mean, that's great for the guy that made Astartes, but I think a lot of people are worried that it's going to happen to more and more Warhammer content made by the fan base. Because the more and more that Games Workshop pick up, the more that they're going to put on their paid subscription service, and the less and less that's going to be for free. Not only this, but it brings into question the future of Warhammer fan content in general, whether lore videos or painting tutorials, whether that will still be allowed to be consumed for free by the community. For example, a law channel that might use an image that they haven't copyrighted could get taken down at this point. Or, of course, because Games Workshop and Warhammer is such a big IP, even just the image of something so famous as a Space Marine could be under copyright and things like that could be disallowed in fan content. So, of course, the speculation has been rampant. But finally, we've had some actual confirmation of what Games Workshop are planning to do with this sort of thing. During lockdown, many of our customers missed getting together to roll the dice. As restrictions have eased and the world tends returns to normal, the Warhammer events team went on the road in the US. This effort in kickstarting a return to in-person events has been a rousing success, with each of our roadshow events selling out almost instantly and with live game coverage broadcast to hundreds of thousands of viewers worldwide. We look forward to furthering our events next year. This is a segment that they've put on their profit and loss accounts to do with the community, how they're going to be focusing on bringing more and better community events 
to the people that love Warhammer. But then it goes on to key priorities continue where it gets interesting. Our customers really enjoy user generated content. Of course, this being things like YouTube channels that talk about lore, battle reports, even short films and stories that fans of Warhammer make and put on their YouTube channels or out on the internet for free. And as such, we are committed to supporting fans as they create their own Warhammer related events, videos, articles, podcasts, etc. To this end, we are in the process of creating a community outreach team to work with and support creators and prominent community members who champion the Warhammer hobby outside of our own pages and spaces. And this is good news. Of course, they go on to say we continue to find more ways to surprise and delight our fans, which is a little bit rich because this should have been out ages ago. However, better late than ever. Am I right? So it seems like even a few months ago when they bought out an article talking about how they are going to be a bit stricter with their copyright and how they are going to take it a bit more seriously to defend that IP, we can be safe assured that much of the user generated content that we get so far, whether it is videos or podcasts, even short films should be protected by Games Workshop and even in this case should be supported. They're creating this community outreach team which hopefully should bring more people and creators together and maybe even fund some of this stuff as well. Now while we can sit here and praise Games Workshop for doing good and of course this is all great, it is quite late. Warhammer has been around for decades now and it has been so mainstream for so long it baffles me why this wasn't done earlier. So many small IPs, even things like small game devs have community outreach teams to work with creators to try and help promote because it is is such a symbiotic relationship. Of course, the company creates the product, they create the IP, even the lore and the world around what they're trying to make, and the creators can take that. They can use that as content and make their own stuff to expand around it. The company gets free promotion and the creators, well, they get stuff to talk about. In cases of YouTubers, the creators also get free content that they can make money off themselves that will also help promote Warhammer in general, which is why I have no idea why this wasn't done earlier but it is being done now. So what can we actually expect to come of this? Well, of course, they've not really gone into too much detail, but I'm really, really hoping. It's not just about saying, look, we'll let you get on with it and do it, that they actually do make an, an active effort to support this sort of thing. Go out their way to give non-copyrighted stuff to people that make law videos that they can use on their YouTube channel, because there's always that issue with using copyrighted artwork. Now, I'd love to see some more encouragement and funding for stuff like anime projects and CG stuff like Astartes, but unfortunately I doubt that's going to come in this sort of case. That will be something that they will continue to bring onto their Warhammer Plus service, which of course is something they've also mentioned in this breakdown. But what do you guys think? I think it's in general positive news. The fact that they're hoping to support more user generated content and the people that are around the Warhammer community. Of course I'd really like them to go into a bit more detail what they mean about this, because it has been a sketchy year. There has been a lot of speculation about what's been going on and it's not not all being that positive so i really hope they bring out something else and a follow-up to this in the near future but let me know what you think is this a step in the right direction for games workshop or are you still a bit on edge about the future of user generated and the fan base of the warhammer community online let me know down in the comments but leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it leave a dislike if you didn't yet until then i will see you in the next one